I'm assuming this is our uh, uh, stall that we had will be the last day. Are you guys amen with me on that? Oh, amen. <laughs> amen. For this year. For this year. Yeah, for this year. Anyway, it's, um, after you have um, lots of snow and you struggle with it, when it can come rain, then you appreciate the rain. And you, you will not, you know, make complain in that way. And I think it, it's funny how how we are as a human being, how our our thing, you know, our mindset, and our thinking. When you have something good, you complain, but until you get something worse, you know, then you will say, "Yeah, thank you, God. You know, thanks for the rain. Thanks for the rain." You like the snow? Oh, okay. In the mountain. In the mountain. You can have it in the mountain when you want to play with it. I mean, I like it for the snow, but if it can melt away right away, for a week, I'm okay. Because I actually um, will have to be stay at home, you know, not going out. Anyway, um, last, um, I think November, was it November when we have our, our first snow, right, around then? Mm. So I was feeling a bit, you know, after staying home for a couple of days, I have an electric car, so my car is a bit light. It's probably not my last for to blow in the snow. So I take the advice uh, not to go out when the snow is on, you know, is heavy on the road. Um, I don't want to try because I I believe uh, when someone tells you to be careful, you bet, you know, be careful. So the snow snow came and it melted away. I was happy, so I was driving my car. I actually don't have any agenda. I just want to get out. <laughs> uh, so I got out and then it was a little bit kind of uh, dark about four o'clock and things start to uh, sunset already. So I, I, I would basically say, I just want to go. So I, you know, I went to the nearest mall, Gibbon Mall. So I was traveling and down 104 and going to turn a left turn on 152. If you guys tell me that area, just a left turn. It was an easy one, so I do that you know, 10,000 times already, no problem. Um, at this time, because I'm happy, I don't know why, and there's the turn arrow. So when you turn arrow, when you stop, you know, turning, you should not turn, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, I was the third car, or at least on the third car. So when the, the, the front car all turning left, and the car in, before you turn to the car in front of me, the, the light of the turning is gone already. So in theory, we should all stop, right? Mm -hmm. The front car, quickly make a left turn. And I don't know why, I just follow and went to the left car, just left. And as soon as I turn the left and I see, because once the turn light is gone, the pedestrian light will be on, so they start to walk. So as soon as I make the turn, the, the, uh, there's one girl actually step up onto the road to the lead. So I, I know I, I didn't hit her on the It was near, like close and calm. And that's not the worst part. The worst part, like, you know, I got the police car. So all the way to the road, he actually followed me. So I have to, you know, park to the side. And and so he came down and asked me for my, you know, driver license. And then started to lecture on me. He said, you know, it was a danger. You should not do this. Well, the front car should not do this. You know what? And for me, at that time, I really knew because when I make the turn, I see the girl walk out in my heart. You already know you are wrong. You should not have done it, okay? So I said, I pause. I have kept on saying, sorry, officer, I know. It was my, I don't know what I was thinking. It was a bad decision I made. So I keep on power. I just said, it was my fault. So I keep, basically, I did not try to argue myself out. I just say, you know, it, it, I saw it. I saw the girl. It was, yeah. And I will not do again. And all this is, he said, I saw it. And it was me. I make a bad decision doing that. And she, he was saying that the car in front of you should not do that too because he is in front of you. I couldn't catch him, he would catch me. Right? So I said, I don't know. Anyway, and I was thinking, okay, I'm not going to think it now. So I had to accept it and I apologize. And then, and then but I pray, my heart said, God, I know I was uh, wrong. But it's your mercy, please have grace. You know, I would be seen, was not. When I do the prayer, I was not having a lot of faith, you know. They got caught in the car, you know. There's nothing we can do. But you know what? As soon as I, you know, I finished my prayer, 
this officer kind of see me, did not try to defend myself, I made my wrong. He actually tell me, give me back the thing, don't do it again next time. <laughs> oh, praise God, I was saying, yes, officer, I will not do it again. I will. And that night, I tasted what we experience what we call grace. Mm. Like we knew about it. We, we, we talk about it a lot about grace. Mm. Like that, that night, because I knew I was at wrong. Like you definitely know you're wrong. Sometimes you didn't know how, how fast you, you speak and get caught. If something you do think you're wrong, right? It's just that the meter was, you know, whatever the measurement was, uh, uh, the, the police is too harsh on you. But in this case, I knew I was wrong because there was anxiety in my heart and no one was wrong. And I got away. It's not because I got away, because God was gracious to me. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking and been pondering about thinking about grace. You know, we talk about grace yeah, so much in our, our Christian world. It's almost a little word that we use, but many of us do not actually want to go and um, expound on what that means mm. in our day-to-day -day walk. What does that mean? Because a lot of time, I think grace is just lenient, leniency. It's just a pattern, uh, a pattern that that I, you know, uh, something I marry things that I got. Like I should be I'm pardoned from something I do wrong, mm. which is just, is correct. But actually, I find our grace is actually more than that. And the Lord start to tell me, grace is power also. Yeah. It's not just a simply a pardon, mm. but grace is also power. Mm. And I was thinking, oh, what's the mean by that? So I start to to do some, you know, I know when you have some idea, you start to do some research and try to understand what you, when God say about people, grace is power, not just power. And so I, 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 I did my thing, and I, I'm today I'm going to try to pack, you know, uh, articulate out and share what I have, you know, look into what's that mean. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start with looking into First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. It says this way. By the grace of God, I am what I am. This is Paul who writing uh, the letter to the Corinthian church. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I work harder, other than them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. So Paul is actually saying, it. you know you know me, I've been, you know, be your mentor, I've been, your, your, you know, apostle that been imparting all the revelation to you. I'm the one that, you know, like bringing you into the, king, the fall of kingdom of God. And he said, it's not because I'm good that I am, uh, I mean, educated or not because I'm a, I, I, I know a lot. It's because of the grace of God that was in me. You got to think about Paul is not a, you know, like a common, he actually is the, uh, the, 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 what we call the, uh, the elite of the elite in that group. Like he is quite famous uh, in that circle. He's quite educated. He know the scripture inside out. And yet he will say that, what you see, whatever thing that, I'm part of, that, that motivate me or things that enable me is because it's the grace of God. Mm. And, and he said it, and then you, you look into, um, again, on the, um, on, I will say, the um, next scripture. Uh, what was it? Um, that was, yeah, Second Thessalonians chapter 1 said, Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God could count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pressure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. And the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and our Lord, our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. So he's again, he's you know, emphasizing the work of faith in this case in Second Thessalonians, the letter to them to say, again, he account what, you know, what allowed him to do is the work of faith is because of the grace. Mm. And even on the, um, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 
8 to say, by, For by grace you have been saved to faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. This is something that we all know that this is everything we do, everything we have, the gift we have, it's all come from God. And, I, and, and, and today I only want, want to say that even our obedience to Christ is the grace of God. We are not born to be obedient. Yes. And I can tell you that. That we can go back to uh, to the Genesis, you know, God of Eden. Only one command, commandment that God gave it to mankind, to Adam and Eve. You should not eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat all the tree, and there's two trees in there, including the tree of life. It's basically said you should eat. All the tree, including the tree of life, to put parting the life you need, but don't eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's a choice. God is saying, are you choose to obey me or not? Simple thing. The first couple in the Garden of Eden, a simple, there's no 613, you know, law or, or instruction that you need to obey. Only one, don't eat that tree. Because once you eat it, it's going to be, you know, basically it's saying that you, when you eat that drink, you're going to have uh, your own knowledge about, and you're going to be able to, not say able to, you're going to say that I want to control my decision about what I see is good and right. So instead of saying, I want you, Lord, that you are the one guiding me, giving me light, and, and telling me what I should do. I am obedient to you. He said, No, I want to declare independence in, a, in, in this independence day from you. That I want to make our own decision. I, if I see it's good, I say it's good. What I see is wrong, yeah, I declare wrong. And guess what? Because of that decision that we say we want to do that, look at uh, around the world. Are we better off? In the Garden of Eden, we not. We uh, we have you know we have food, but then we have people who are hungry. We have starvation, we have pollution. All things happen. It, it's it's that way. So in the Garden of Eden, that's one. So God said, okay, now we fail. Now it's happened. Now I'm gonna call a group of people. Now I'm gonna um, um, call Moses up to lead. A group of people, and this group of people is going to be the light of the world. If they're able to be the more modern nation, a race of people, a tribe that I could tell the world whatever they do will be a, a um, if you do all according to my commandment that I, I give it to you, then you will be fine. You're going to be, be blessed. And if you, if they, the Israelite was able to do that, then the world will be able to say, yeah, we should do what this, you know, this. This group of people, they have it all. They got the right. And and, and, and interesting enough, there was Ghana Eden, there was three of life. And when God called Moses up, there is a burning bush. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he called Moses and then he give and then he tell tell Moses to say, When you lead the Israelite out from Egypt, I want you to come back to this mountain where the tree or uh, um, burning bush. Think about it. It's almost like, you know, symbolic a tree of life. Well, when you come back here, I want you to worship here. And so Moses, after, you know, we all know the story, lead the people out, and, and then God gave them the Ten Commandments. In, you know, the, in the tablet, and then give you all the instruction about what needs to be done, you know, how to do sacrifice, how to do, you know, uh, build the tabernacle, how to, you know, uh, do the, all the ceremony, cleansing. So all the instruction was given, and that's what we found in the first Bible, first five book of the, you know, in the Bible, mostly talked about God giving the instruction what to do. And uh, we call that I don't call it today law, principle, or instruction, you know, uh, a mosaic, uh, what do you call it, mosaic, mosaic, mosaic mosaic law, right? Yeah. So those are a Torah in, in uh, a Hebrew word. So we give it to them. And, uh, you know, think about it, it's, you know, started with Ten Commandments, then of course the elaborate uh, on the 
into 613 a law and a, or instruction for the Israelite to, uh, to carry on able to have a relationship with our God and to make themselves righteous every year so that they can be able to serve God that way. And guess what? Well, most of us in the mountain, the downloading from God and all need to be done. The people for 40 days and 40 nights. And guess what? The people grew up, you know, impatient and started to say, oh, I don't know what Moses is up there where he is and we need a leader. Can we, you know, build, you know, basically make them golden calf? Remember the story. I don't make a golden calf because you want to have, you don't say, I choose you, God. I want to obey you. I want, you know, I, I, I'm going to follow you. Oh, I'm going to make an image now with a golden calf. I want this golden calf to lead us out of the Egypt. So again, second time, fail. Right? And that's why after that, you're going to see, you have seen the book of Isaiah, book of Ezekiel, book of uh, Jeremiah, and we have not been, they've been not doing well. So there was a lot of lamentation about and crying out to God how we, you know, this problem continued. It didn't get better, even though he has, we have 10 commandments, we have all the 613 instructions, you know, what to do. It didn't get better. And then we, we see, then the, the Lord has said, you know, to Jeremiah, he said that, I, you know, the law that I, you know, I'm gonna um, put a, um, the law within them that I will be, um, what do you call it? I will write it in their heart. So, you know, and, and, and Jeremiah and the Lord is, is and uh, God is speaking to Jeremiah and say, you see these people, you know, even a simple Ten Commandments they can't even follow. One commandment cannot follow. Ten Commandments cannot follow. Even I give you 613, they cannot follow too. And I have to come up with a solution. And the solution is what we know today to our Lord Jesus that we are to him, that he is the one that's going to be the one uh, be the sacrificial lamb, that he's the one to make us righteous, mm -hmm. that we are, you know, and, and the only condition is not that we need to go through to be nailed at the cross again. He said, he has already done that. What we need is to believe mm -hmm. and to accept. That's why we say, you know, it's through faith that we are saved. Not because each one of us are better than, 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 than other people. I remember many years ago I was in, in the office and I look around, you know, I probably is one or two people around my, my department that I actually consider saved by grace. And I look around, I say, what makes me so different? Am I better than them who actually, they, some of them already hear the gospel too. In fact, some of them mock about it as well, right? They question the challenge of the Bible. I say, how come I'm the one that when I hear the words and I, I was able to believe. Not that I have no question. After questioning, after you know, doing all the searching and thing, come to a conclusion what the Bible says is the truth. And then the Lord Jesus was needed to be on earth to redeem us. He is the solution for the mess of the mankind. Without him, we cannot be able to solve that. So it, you know, it, and you know, as as and as I was going to, and I found that it is by grace that I can be obedient to the voice of God and able to respond by faith to say I accept Jesus and Lord and say. Mm. And I believe all you, you know, all of us have a different uh, path or different way where how you encounter Jesus, how you actually be accepted by Him, but nevertheless. We, might, we can come away to say that it's not because we're a better person. Because I meet, I met a lot of people who are in different faith, or even no faith, they're a better person than a lot of us. And yet, we was able to, um, to able to accept Jesus and be justified by faith. And that's just, to me, it's, it's a miracle by itself. And, uh, and, and, and that's why we have, you know, so I, I come to a conclusion, we are able to do it, our obedience is actually to faith. And faith is the one that gives us an, an, an enabling power to believe. You see, 
like back to my um, and and that was also another thing that I noticed that we actually are questioning it about. Oh, now that our Lord Jesus has come, we are safe under grace. Then we should abolish all the law. So you were gonna have a lot. Now I'm sure all of us has a lot of uh, soul searching or even debate about: Are we under the law or under grace? When people take the law. Uh, to come to talk to us, we say you are the legalistic. We are, you know, we were pointed that way, and because we are grace, you know, it. And we have to be very careful of that mm. because just because we we get a re, you know free redemption or free salvation doesn't mean that it doesn't cost us cost the Lord cost our God uh, uh, nothing. We got it free, but someone has to pay for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the Lord Jesus has to go through all these things so that we can be free. Yeah. And secondly, that just because we are saved by grace doesn't mean that it gives us a license to sin again. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And, and that is where I think a lot of us uh, that thought that we have a passport to, to heaven now and we got eternal, we can see that's not true. That's why we need grace, power. To actually able to walk it through our salvation, to be mm-hmm. continually sanctified by His blood, mm-hmm. and that need a power. And you, you and I know every day we encounter so many decision making that we need to make whether we actually are obedient to God or not, or we want to do or our own desire to uh, to, to 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 do that. And and we we might be you know not wanted to uh, uh, to uh, even to. To want to follow through, and we think that by grace we should be fine. You see, in the scripture, Jesus said, I came not to abolish the law, mm-hmm. but to fulfill it. Okay. It means that yeah. I come not because the law is no good that I need to abolish all. Yeah. I come to fulfill it. In fact, when I'm telling you in the new covenant, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your you know, strength. And that you love your neighbor as yourself. That law, even though it's so simple, it actually very tough. He said, "You, you know." And he talk about the ten commandment. This two commandment that he give you, new covenant, is actually encompass the ten commandment. In fact, he say, "I'm gonna make it even harder." You know, you know. In the past, you didn't get caught on sin. You didn't get stoned. It, 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 you think that you're okay. But I'm, and, and our Lord Jesus said, this day, even your thinking is, if you are coveting in your heart, if you are jealous in your heart, you already sin. If you are lasting about, uh, you know, uh, lasting inside your heart, you already sin. So my law, even you say to faith, is going to be even tougher. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. I am still, you know, you, you, my grace, if you tap into my grace, you're going to be able to do okay. You're going to be, you know, able to, to, to overcome all the obstacles, all the challenges, all the temptation. And in fact, you know, I, you know, I look into, you know, law is actually essential in our life. If you don't have law, if you don't are able to know you whether you make a mistake or not, are you all fancy? Mm-hmm. If you don't know that the speed limit is 90 kilometers per hour, if a police caught you, you, you don't know. You say you didn't say anything. You know, there is no sign to tell me I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually offending the law. So law is there so that we know that when we, not that when we get caught, we know that we are actually uh, uh, what you call offensive to the law. That we offend, what do you call it? offender, right? That's it. Um, yeah, basically we we are, you know, basically you broke. Uh, what do you call? It? <laughs> I don't know to say. You broke the law. Yes. We you break the law because we know the law. Mm-hmm. So law is essential. And and in fact, law is actually necessary in our life. And that's why we say this book is containing all the law and instruction in there for your life. If you master it, you will know what to do. In fact, last week I shared about Jesus say, I'm the light. He is the knowledge. He's the one. He's the words that come from heaven. He's telling you what you need to able to be 
it would live successfully and prosper on earth if you follow my commandment. Now, if you say in here, and then, uh, and 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 if and so the the law is essential, and if you know the law, you will able to live a life that is glorifying God, right? So that's very important. So law is essential. Law is is necessary. Law is 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 inherent. In fact, you know, law is inherent just like um, the gravity, the law of gravity. You know that what go up must come, must come down. If you know that what go up must come down, you know that law. Then you don't care whether people throw things out because if you're able to put something at the, on the bottom, you're able to catch it up. If somebody throws some money up the air, you don't have to jump to get it because you know that it's going to come down because by knowing the law, yes. right? right? So law can make you successful if you tap into it, right? So law is actually allow you to where you can predict your outcome. So if you know the law, that's like in Joppa say, meditate this word day and night, so that you, you will part meditating it, the, word, the words of God day and night, so that you will prosper it. Because it's saying that if you master this, the law that I gave it to you, the divine law, the spiritual law, you will be prosperous. The same thing, success is predictable, Failure is predictable too, mm. because if you don't follow the law, or the um, you know, yeah, follow the law, you're not going to be successful. So, for instance, I know that if I put mango seed into a vinegar or put into an alcohol solution, you think the mango will able to stop and grow? No, because it's against the law, against the creation law. The seed has to be buried on the soil and water it, then it will grow and bear fruit, right? Mm -hmm. But if you do that, you think you are better, you know you are wiser than other people, you're going to say, I think, you know, mango, if I put it into alcohol, the wine, I think it will have more nutrition, you should be able to grow faster. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. It won't work. Even though we think we are smart in here, we think that we can do better. But that is God's creation law. The only law that our Lord Jesus abolished is those ritual law that just make ourselves righteous or make the uh, is the, the, the ritual of things that uh, sacrifice our animal before he come, before him as the as the, as the sacrificial lamb. So their law, they actually quite a few laws. So we have a, I call it natural law or divine law. So law that God put together this universe together. So you even how the rotation of the earth, how the, uh, what do you call the, the moon, how they evolve around the earth. You cannot even, you know, make your um, uh, um, angular change. Because if you actually make some change about this orbit circulation, Disaster will happen, mm -hmm. right? And the earth is slanting, I don't know how many degrees in the incline. You cannot be saying, oh, I think, you know, the earth has to be, you know, in certain angle because that's not what God created that way. Mm -hmm. So the creation, those law is called permanent law. Whether you accept Jesus or not accepting Jesus, those law apply to everyone. Got it? Mm -hmm. And there are some spiritual law, God say, you know, the, uh, um, uh, what do you call, he asking us to uh, to be generous. He asking us to say, if you, if you spot whatever you sow, you will reap. Those principles, I call it spiritual law and divine law, those are permanent too. It doesn't change. It was there in the day one, it will continue. Yes. And whether you, you know, you, whether you are uh, um, a, a man or woman of faith or not, it's going to apply. That's why, you know, a lot of people who do not know about God, if they apply a certain principle that he he, he, he had created to govern the whole earth and, and to for you to multiply, if you tap into that, 
whether you are Christian or non-Christian, you will prosper. Mm. Yes. You follow me? Yes. So yes. there are law that's temporary. I will say the the, the ceremony law, the ritual, uh, ritual it have it has been replaced by what our law has done. Right? There are creation law. There are some you know uh, what I call uh, natural law, divine law, spiritual law. That's from here will not change. So don't think that after accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior, you could get away from law. In fact, you should tap and and learn more from this book so that you could walk closer to him. So that you could be the instrument um, for him to bless others. Just like he say to um, you know in uh, in a lot of his scripture to say that, you know, when you're able to do it, I believe it's um, a second Corinthians 4, 15. Let's look at that. For all things are for your sake, that grace having spread to many, many cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So what he's saying there to say, you know, when you actually know that, um, that by grace and understanding the grace and learning from this book about the law and the knowledge, and we were able to be the instrument of grace to other extent. And that will cause many to come to give thanksgiving to Allah and give glory to Allah. And this is actually um, it's very, very important. And I, I say again, it's not that the law, some people say, you know, people will come to tell you, and in fact, I know that we have encountered us, you say, hey, no, no, the Bible say, you know, we'll say, oh, you should not, this one say, you should not do this and do this. A lot of time, if you think about it, without having the grace or having the Holy Spirit in you to guide you, because the grace that is within you is a power that come from our world. It is the Holy Spirit that's in you, the guide in you and give you revelation. And if you don't have the revelation, you're gonna read this book with a letter, literally with whatever it say that. And you and 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 it, it say uh, the letter kills in Second Corinthians say for but the spirit give life to it. So basically it say without the grace power the Holy Spirit in you. When you read this book, if you're not careful, you're gonna take that as 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 a, um, as a way to judge people. And a lot of time in the Bible, that the Paul gives to instruction to some local churches to say, you know, for this church, you know, if you see, do not do this and that. He's trying to give you a solution, just like God gives temporary solution to the Israelite to solve a righteous problem, okay? There are some letters that Paul wrote to some of the local churches, and he gives some instructions saying that, oh, the woman need to wear hair, you know, wear, wear the towel your hair and those things. Those are not actually spiritual law. They are just some instruction that Paul gave to the local people to fix a problem at that time they're happening. Okay? Otherwise today we all are gonna have to cover ourselves. Otherwise we are being, being seen for any we're not being obedient. You follow what I'm trying to say? Yes. So when you actually have the grace power within you, you are going to to differentiate what is what God say and what is truly is just a temporal solution to the, to the local church. Alright? So why do we need to know all this thing? Because I want you to say when you actually understanding and experiencing grace, you know you were able to see uh, a lot of things in a different way. You're gonna see things happening and in the eyes of God, and you wanna be a bit less judge judgmental towards people mm -hmm. because when you realize that what you have is by God's grace, yeah. you will be more yeah. humble, Amen. right? Yeah. You will not think that oh, I'm I think I I've been too uh, training in this Bible college, I'm going to be, you know, I'm something that I know everything. Mm -hmm. No, when you experience God, that's why as you go older or mature in the Lord, you're going to realize that 
you actually find out you are actually less uh, judgmental of other people. You will even see things happening in front of you. You will say, uh, that's not, cool, you know, not quite uh, aligned with what I'm thinking, but I'm going to go and find out why this person is doing this way. Right? You will not right away think that that person is wrong. And, and that's important. And the reason I want to share with you, because we are in, in a season whereby God is, is um, calling us uh, to be a vessel that he's going to do great, thing, great work for us. And we, all of us, need to be treading carefully around what is happening within us. Yes. A lot of time when pride will just come upon us without we know it. Mm. We think that we know better. Mm. Oh, we just discern something and then we think we're better. And when you do that, the pride can easily take a hold of you. Mm. Without you knowing it, you think you're doing good God of favor, you think you're doing the team of favor, but it will actually happen to you. So, I want to challenge you guys to really appreciate what grace is. And I want you guys to truly ask God to let you see everything He allow you to experience grace, that you were able to, to extend this grace to other people. You understand it? That's why when you extend your grace over to other people, then you were able for other people to give thanks to God and bring His glory. And it is, it's, it's very important. So, number one, I would say, if we will grow in hum uh, hum humility if we actually understanding about grace. Amen. And you will not be judged by other people. Mm. Secondly, I think you will fall in love with God because you know you don't deserve it. Sure. And yet you get it. He gave it to you. He yeah. was able to put you into a place where you have no idea that you, you, you will imagine where you are. You will appreciate so much and you fall in love with the person, the God who provides to you. You will fall in love. And, and, and and you also, thirdly, I will say, you will start to trust him so much that you're going to say, God, may you increase in me and I decrease. Mm. Because you know that your, yourself, you don't have anything to offer right. unless he come upon you. Right. Okay? And then you will ask. You will start, you start to ask. You're not going to say, oh, I'm, you know, Helen is wrong, God fix her. No. You're going to start to say, God fix me. Because mm -hmm. I think, I'm not being balanced. Yeah. I, think, I think I'm being judgmental. I think I'm, a, I'm thinking a fool of myself. Mm. And you were able to, to say, God, I want you to increase, I'm decreased. Sure. Yeah. And you will, and then the next, the fourth one, I think you, the grace power is going to give you the strength to forgive others who offend you. Yeah. That is very important because without his grace, without tasting this, the grace from God and, and his power, you will not able to forgive a lot of things that people hurt you. Mm. Especially, about, and, and this is important because at this hour, God has really spoke to us. We cannot hang on to our past. Whatever we, we have in the past, we need to get fixed and move on because if you don't, you're going to miss out. That's right. This season is not like the last two years, but we have time. This season is God's going to move fast. Mm. And we need to get ourselves in order that way. Amen. Amen. Okay, and then I will say that um, we also, next one, I'm not sure, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, number six. You're going to be able to freely give out what you freely receive. Mm. You freely receive the grace, you're going to freely give it out. Mm. You freely receive the strength from Him, you're going to freely give it out. Mm. You will freely receive the revelation. You will not charge other people for the revelation you have. You will not want to write a book and make some money out of it. Because it's freely received, you freely give it. Right? And you freely you know, uh, get uh, forgiveness, freely give it out your grace as well. Exactly. You need Amen. to do that. You need to do that. And number seven, and then you're going to be able to uh, walk even upright and be uh, attracting God to you when you were able to see other people better than you. Mm. Okay? You might be strong in one area, and I can guarantee you are weak on another area. Sure. So don't feel that you are better overall with others. Mm. Just because you are having some 
give them that you are better than others. Don't think that you are overall better because other people might have other things that you don't have. It may not show up. It's not one of the gifting that, like speaking or in, 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 in public or, or something that you can show up. It doesn't mean they don't have it because God is fair. He gives everybody a gift. Okay? He's, he packages with talent to God mm. us to accomplish what He wants. It, it's like I will I will go for us to walk in our path or walk our destiny. A destiny you're going to God. You know God when you pray God, you're not competing with others. You're competing yourself. Yeah. Right. This it's one of the game that you know. I don't understand why people <laughs> love it, but you know, to me it's not challenging enough. But you're competing yourself. So in the, in our life. God give you talent. He already set you, you know, to say a path to go. You need to discover all the skipping. You need to know whether you're walking in His calling or in His will yeah. to accomplish what He wants. Yes. Okay. So you you will have that. The next thing I will say that uh, we were able to uh, when you and un understanding grace power, you are going to depend on Holy Spirit more hey, because He's the grace that God sent. Without him coming to mm. teach us, guide us, mm. uh, you know, show us um, and give us revelation, we weren't able to understand even simple thing like grace. That's right. Right? Yes. We know grace is just yes. letting us to lead and lead and to get us away from pardon. No more than that, it gives us strength. So I would say that for this season, learn about grace. Embrace grace, give grace, and let grace go in you so that we can be ready in season, in this season, so that the Lord could extend the grace that in us that we can extend out to others. And many will be attracted to Him, many will give thanks to Him. Amen? Amen. All right, so this is what I just want to encourage. And you, um, Grace, um, and, and and truly ask God for this week to say, open my eyes so I can see grace at work. Where area my my area that your grace is at work, mm. and then give thanks because thanksgiving with that attitude you're gonna get more. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you.